Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Sura, your favorite sewing friend. And today I'm going to show you how I made a two-piece set that I found in Salvos for like $8, I think. I think everything is $8 in Salvos. $8 and I turned it into a slightly nicer looking two-piece set. I also used the excess fabric to create this really humongous scrunchie. So if you want to know how I did that, just keep watching. So here is the two-piece set in all its frumpy glory. Um, it's actually an interesting color, sort of like a pale green, silver. I like the sweetheart neckline and that's about it because the rest of it's just, you know, kind of blah. So this is what the two-piece looks like on the body. It was a little bit too big for me, so I needed to take in the sides of the top and also the waistband of the skirt to make it fit. I also wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do with the top, so here I am standing around for what seemed like an eternity trying to figure out what to do. And in the end, I decided to crop the top and make a little drawstring closure at the front. But first I needed to take it in um, at the sides. So I tried the top inside out and pinned the sides to where I thought it would fit right. Then I tried it on again properly to make sure the pinning was good enough. And then I marked where to crop the top with a pin. Making note of the fact that I would need some seam allowance for the drawstring casing about three centimeters. Kind of just eyeballed that. Then I took off the freshly pinned top and measured how much I needed to take it in at the sides. I measured on both sides, totaled the sum and averaged it. Turned out to be one and a half centimeters on either side. I pinned the one and a half centimeter mark at the top and then just blended it back into the original side seam. So once marked, I got my matching thread, which I also eyeballed at the store and I'm pretty pleased with the color matching I did from a photo on my phone to the thread in the store because normally I'm very off, but this turned out really well. So anyway, I threaded up and sewed in the new side seams. I tried it on again and it fit fairly well, so I was really pleased about that. And now to tackle the cropping of the top. So here I am again marking where I needed to crop it, taking into consideration again the seam allowance that's needed for the casing. And so once I worked that out, I needed to crop the top by nine centimeters. And so here I am being careful and marking the nine centimeters all the way around. I've learned my lesson from trying to eyeball hems and cutting randomly, so that's a very bad idea. So this time I'm being super careful. Once I cropped the hem of the top, I could then use that leftover piece to create the drawstring. My drawstring would be one centimeter in width when finished. So I'm marking out a width of three centimeters. I used the entire length of the cropped fabric, but in retrospect, I think I should have doubled that length so that I could have a longer tie. I didn't think to measure my waist, which is really dumb, lesson learned, but luckily it did fit around my waist just enough to make a small bow. So once I cut out the drawstring piece, I folded it in half and gave it a press right sides together. Then over to the sewing machine to sew the side seam together with a one centimeter seam allowance. Then I got a loop turner and used it to turn the tie right sides out. I normally struggle with loop turners, but this time it went really smoothly, which is very surprising because every single time I've snagged it so many times that it just will not turn. But yeah, this time it worked out really well. Now I had to figure out the width of the casing for the hem. So I worked out that because my drawstring width was one centimeter, the casing needed to be one and a half centimeters. But to make the casing nice, I would have to fold up the hem by one and a half centimeters, sew it, and then fold it up again by one and a half centimeters to finish it off. So in total, the casing width would therefore be three centimeters. I was pretty thrilled to figure this out, but then only realized that in order to get the drawstring through the casing, it would need to have some form of opening. And normally a drawstring waist has two buttonholes for the ties to pop out of, but I didn't want to create buttonholes in my top because I don't know how to use the buttonhole function in my machine because it's very manual and it would definitely mangle the fabric. So instead I decided to make it worse and weirdly make a snip in the center of the hem, like a little rectangle shape. Um, my thinking was that I could finish the raw edges in this weird rectangle when I was making the casing. It sort of worked and also didn't, but I went along with it anyway because I had already snipped it and there was no going back. So I made the casing and then threaded the drawstrings through, then tried it on and I was actually pleasantly surprised that it had worked out okay. And because it was tied at the front and the top had a bit of volume, you couldn't really tell that the opening of the drawstring was all super manky. But I still needed to fix up the drawstring ends and the drawstring opening, so I clumsily hand sewed the raw edges to make it not fray. It looks real bad, but it does the job and you can't really see it, so I'm not fussed. Now to tackle the skirt. 
So the skirt had a button and a zip closure at the back. It also had elastic casing on either side of the zip to make it more comfortable, which I liked. I first had to detach the part of the lining which was sewn to the main fabric. And then I tried the skirt on inside out and pinned the sides together to make it fit me. From there I marked the sides with pins and figured out where I needed to take it in and it went in by two centimeters on either side. So on the wrong side of the main fabric, I used some tailor's chalk to blend the two centimeter mark at the top into the side seams on both sides. Then I just sewed along that line. And when I was doing this, I had to actually sew down on the main fabric and not the lining because the lining, I was scared that it would sort of bunch together and be uneven. So it was a lot easier to sort of use it on the main fabric instead of the lining and the main fabric together, which would have been a little bit more tricky. Okay, so this is the top. This is the top. I made a little tie at the waist to make it kind of cute and you can wear it with jeans, whatever. Um, the skirt, I took it in. It's a little bit puffy here on the sides. Um, should I just, should I just crop it? Should I just hem the thing and make it shorter so it's like more fun? Decisions, decisions, decisions. I spent ages trying to figure out what to do with the skirt. It had back split, which dictated where I would have to hem if I wanted to shorten the skirt. So then I spent ages trying to work out if it was okay short or too short. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it where the split is at the back and hope for the best. I hardly ever wear any short things, so this is going to be like one of the few times I ever <laughs> crop something and wear it short, but I just feel like this colour is so blah sometimes um, that you need to jazz it up with some skin. So I measured how long the split was, it was 27 centimetres from the hem to the split. So I proceeded to mark 27 centimeters from the hem all the way around, again, trying to be careful. And then I cut it and did the same with the lining. I finished the raw edges by overlocking and then I pressed up the hem by two centimeters and sewed it down. I did the same thing for the lining, but pressed it up three centimeters so that I wouldn't see it poking out underneath the main fabric. I tried it on and it wasn't so bad. The only issue was the sides were still a little bit puffy, so I decided to take it in a bit more. Again, did the same thing. I put it on inside out, then pinned where I needed to take it in by, then marked out another side seam and sewed down the line. Okay, so I've done the skirt. It is now hemmed. I took in the sides a little because it was a bit puffy. I didn't sew, I didn't overlock or finish anything because, I mean on the sides, because I'm thinking if I got a bit fatter, then I could always just take it out again. So I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and now I'm thinking, what do I do with all this excess, all this excess material? And I'm thinking of doing gigantic scratchies. I've seen them all over the internet and they're pretty cool. I want to get like oversized scrunchies to put in my hair. So let's do that. Um, this seems big enough, right? I found this really great tutorial on how to make scrunchies, like normal sized ones, uh, not ginormous ones. And it's from Sasa Time. I'll link her YouTube tutorial in the description box below in case what I'm doing here makes no sense. But basically you get the fabric piece you fold it right sides together and sew down the seam. Because my scrunchie was humongous, I had a one and a half centimeter seam allowance, so that didn't make a difference. Um, and once you've sewn the side seams together, you press open the seams. Then with the openings on either side, fold it like so, and then the outer bits of the material will be sewn together while the inner parts are left inside and out of the way. So then I sewed the two outer layers together, making sure that the inner layers were not in the way or being caught while sewing. And so while you're sewing the outer layers together, I would just pull out the inner part and continue sewing until there was nothing to pull out anymore, but making sure to leave a gap.
So here I have my inside out scrunchy material and then I'm just flipping it right sides out through the gap. Et voila, scrunchy. Well, not quite because I needed to get some elastic and thread it through. So I used a two centimeter width elastic from Birch, measured my wrist or thereabouts, and then threaded that elastic through with a safety pin. Then sewed the two elastic ends together and boy, was this scrunchy strange looking. Aha, giant scrunchy complete. Look at it, it's so big. <laughs> it's a little bit intimidating, but let's see what it looks like. Cute. I can probably put it up in a bun now. It's a lot easier to make buns with a ginormous scrunchie. Ooh. Kind of looks like a big bow in your hair, but it's a big ass scrunchie. Okay, well, I know what to do with all my scraps now. I'm just gonna make humongous scrunchies. And that is it. That is a wrap on my two-piece set upcycle-ish slash ginormous scrunchie. So if you guys are looking for things to do with your excess fabric, you can just keep making either normal scrunchies or go really extreme and make a humongous scrunchie. Um, I've seen seeing them all over the internet and I really like them. I especially like when you put them in a bun and it just kind of sits there on your head. It's really good for people with really long thick hair. So yes, I'm actually surprised at how this turned out. To be honest, I had to do quite a bit of hand sewing around the top because, um, yeah, I didn't know how to, I didn't push in the little ends to sew it nice because it was too small. So I just hand sewed the, um, frayed bits. Uh, yeah, a bit touch and go with the top to be honest, cause I was like, oh, I actually have to, if you want to put a drawstring, you probably have to put buttonholes somewhere for the drawstring to come out of that I was like nope just gonna like snip up and then make an opening somehow anyway worked out pretty happy with how it turned out I can wear this top with you know jeans other things it doesn't have to necessarily be together all the time so I'm happy with that if you end up finding a two-piece set that kind of looks similar because there are apparently a lot of them in the stores uh, and you decide to upcycle it, make sure you tag me so I can see what you've done to it. It's very exciting. And also if you decide to make a humongous scratchy. So if you like this video and you want to see more of my sewing adventures, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.